We got to get Ricky Lake off the air, y'all. We have got to get Ricky Lake off the air. Where does she find these brothers? Well-known actor and comedian Sinbad has made a huge recovery since suffering a stroke back in October 2020. However, it seems even Sinbad hasn't been able to dodge the financial fallout of his health crisis. His family has gone as far as setting up a donation page to help cover his therapy and medical expenses. It's a stark reminder that even Hollywood legends aren't immune to the industry's shadowy side. This situation casts a spotlight on the murky practices within the entertainment world. It begs the question, how could someone as legendary as Sinbad find themselves in such a precarious financial situation, especially when it comes to their health? Well, that's Hollywood for you. Anyway, according to the website, there is about a 30% chance of survival from a stroke as severe as the one Sinbad experienced. He is learning how to walk and gain movement in his limbs through therapy. Nine months after his initial stroke on July 7, 2021, Sinbad returned home from the hospital to continue his recovery. He said on his website, I am not done, I will not stop fighting until I can walk across the stage again. Sinbad's stroke was caused by a blood clot that traveled from his heart to his brain. A second blood clot traveled to his brain, followed by brain swelling and a bleed, according to media reports. He was taken to West Hills Medical Center on October 25, 2020, to treat the stroke. The following day, he was transferred to Cedar sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles, where doctors performed surgery to reduce swelling in his brain. He was placed in a medically induced coma for several weeks following surgery. He was admitted to California Rehabilitation Institute in May 2021 and began physical, occupational, and speech therapy. A few years after he started therapy, it now seems that the actor is getting better and better. By the end of 2022, Sinbad had already begun showing remarkable progress. His progress is nothing short of remarkable, his family said on a website dedicated to updating his fans about his progress. Limbs that were said to be dead are coming alive and he's taking the steps necessary to learn to walk again. In any case, prior to his illness, Sinbad was a celebrated actor in Hollywood. Throughout the vibrant decades of the 1980s and 90s, Sinbad was an omnipresent figure in the entertainment scene. His comedic talent seemed to permeate every corner of television and film during that era. Amidst headlining numerous comedy specials as the millennium drew to a close, Sinbad showcased his versatility by venturing into television, portraying Coach Oaks on A Different World, and starring in his eponymous sitcom. Additionally, he left his mark on the silver screen with memorable roles in films like House Guest, Jingle All the Way, and Coneheads. Look, man, I need that number. I got state payroll forms, workman's comp. You do have a number, don't you? However, as time marched on, the once ubiquitous Sinbad gradually faded from the spotlight. While he remained active, participating in various projects such as films, comedy specials, and TV shows, the frenetic energy of the Sinbad that had enthralled audiences in the latter part of the 20th century seemed to diminish. His presence shifted from the camera to the microphone, with a focus on behind-the-scenes work. Acknowledging the ebb in his visibility, Sinbad humorously addressed his evolving status in his 2010 special aptly titled, Where You Been? For many fans, it felt like the boisterous comic had momentarily disappeared from the entertainment landscape. Sinbad, however, was far from gone, opting for a different avenue to express his comedic prowess. Really? See, maybe it was like 30, 40 comics. I said, that one there is gonna make it. And I'm gonna borrow money from her. Yeah, yeah. Before adopting the stage name Sinbad, David Adkins navigated through a series of diverse jobs, including a stint in the United States Air Force. During his military service, Adkins entered the Air Force's talent contest in 1981, a competition he lost. Seeking an exit, he repeatedly went AWOL in pursuit of other interests, and his discharge eventually came about due to what he humorously described as parking my car in the wrong position. Sinbad's foray into stand-up comedy was born out of his experiences within and outside the USAF. Determined to make a mark in the entertainment world, he decided on a name change. Choosing Sinbad in homage to the character in Sinbad the Sailor, he has carried that moniker ever since. His initial breakthrough occurred on the talent competition series Star Search, where he competed against Dennis Miller and John Kassir, the latter emerging as the victor. I think it was just a heyday of comedy. Yeah. And, and everybody was unique, everybody was trying to be different. And if you were funny, you're funny. If you're not, you're not. Yeah. It was Although Sinbad secured second place, his career gained momentum. He landed the role of Byron Lightfoot on The Red Fox Show. 
Despite the show's premature cancellation after just 13 episodes due to low ratings and a competitive time slot, it provided Sinbad with an entry point into the professional comedy realm. A walk-on appearance on The Cosby Show in 1987 opened doors, leading to a recurring role on the spin-off series A Different World. Following his initial triumphs, Sinbad's television career soared with his breakout role on A Different World, portraying Coach Walter Oakes from 1988 to 1991 in 74 episodes the show became a platform that significantly bolstered his career. Departing from the series in pursuit of broader horizons, Sinbad expressed his interest in film projects and the development of his own TV series, as revealed to Vanity Fair. His popularity from a different world led to Fox offering him his own titular series, The Sinbad Show, which premiered in 1993. Although not directly reflective of the comedian's life, the show shared certain parallels. Sinbad portrayed David Bryan, a bachelor who becomes the guardian of two foster children, coinciding with his own experience of recently obtaining joint custody of his two children following a divorce, as reported by Jet Magazine. You, you, are, uh, you are doing clean comedy, okay? You huh. never went to dirty. I was, I was dirty. I was, I while The Sinbad Show did not achieve widespread success and face cancellation after just one season, Sinbad remained resilient. Despite the show's brief run, he earned a nomination for Favorite Television Actor at the 1995 Kids' Choice Awards. Undeterred 1990 marked a significant milestone in Sinbad's career as he delivered his first HBO comedy special, Sinbad Brain Damaged, solidifying his impact on the entertainment industry. It was halftime. Halftime did the show at a black campus. Forget the football team, have a band, that's all you need. In the vibrant comedy landscape of the 1990s, securing a spot on HBO was a key milestone for comedians. And for Sinbad, this opportunity arose in 1991 with the release of his inaugural comedy special, Sinbad, Brain Damaged. Recorded before a lively audience at Morehouse College in Atlanta, Georgia, the special resonated strongly with viewers, showcasing enduring humor that stands the test of time and propelling Sinbad into superstardom. This HBO special marked a pivotal moment in Sinbad's career. While he had already achieved success in television, the exposure and acclaim garnered from Sinbad Brain Damaged elevated him to household name status. Demonstrating the essence of hit the ground running, Sinbad's collaboration with HBO became a recurring success story. Not content with a single special, he continued to produce new HBO comedy specials, each contributing to his growing fame and prominence in the entertainment industry. Yeah, it was like at halftime, you went to get something, it'd be... <laughs> People also vividly remember Sinbad's presence in movies and on television during the 1990s, there's a good chance you associate him with a role that never actually existed. Despite popular belief, Sinbad never starred in a movie called Shazam, a fact even confirmed by his own children who have addressed the misconception on various programs like NBCLX. So, how did this false memory take root? Welcome to the Mandela Effect, a curious phenomenon where a large group of people collectively holds a memory that turns out to be incorrect. This can range from simple misconceptions like thinking the Monopoly man wears a monocle. In Sinbad's case, the widespread belief centers around a non-existent movie. His children, appearing on NBCLX, suggested that the confusion likely stems from Shaquille O'Neal's genie movie, Kazam. Despite the absence of any real Shazam movie starring Sinbad, he managed to turn the situation to his advantage. Sinbad cleverly capitalized on the global misremembering with a College Humor Originals piece titled We Found Sinbad's Shazam Genie Movie, in which he both wrote and starred. As Entertainment Weekly put it, College Humor and Sinbad won April Fool's Day. The site claimed a member of the team found this VHS in a box behind a shutdown blockbuster. The statement continued, it's quite damaged and most of it has been recorded over, but what's there is classic cinema and movie magic. We're excited to share it with audiences at large. The whole thing turned out to be a joke at the world's expense via a short trailer. However, in 1993, he packed the house at New York City's Paramount Theater at Madison Square Garden when he recorded his second special, Sinbad, Afros and Bell Bottoms. That special nabbed him an NAACP Image Award for Outstanding Variety Special. The following year, he released Sinbad, Son of a Preacher Man, and he just kept going. Special after special saw him receive fame and fortune. More importantly, he was nominated for numerous awards, and his fame only grew. Man, it's good to be back here. I tell you, um, 
It's wild coming back to them. I went, I went to college out here. Yeah, I went to college. Yeah. Sinbad faced challenges in handling his finances, particularly in managing his bank account and fulfilling tax obligations. The origins of his money-related struggles are not precisely pinpointed, but a decline in work opportunities in the early 2000s compared to the previous decade likely contributed. This decrease in income intensified his financial difficulties, leading to substantial debts with various entities, including the state of California and the federal government. Along with his television success, Sinbad was also thriving in the film department. All of a sudden, it seemed as though Sinbad had completely disappeared, despite all that fame and heck once upon a time fortune. These days, getting gigs with the likes of Netflix isn't necessarily easy, as he recently revealed, yeah, they won't call me, Netflix? No, they said, we have an analytical structure. We have analytics that decide who should be on stage. I told my agent that I'm going to just write my own stuff and put some shows together, and then when they come in, I'll say I want $21 million. At a certain juncture, as highlighted by Time, Sinbad found himself among the top 10 debtors listed by the state of California. According to a 2009 report from the Los Angeles Times, he faced a substantial tax burden, owing approximately $2.5 million in income taxes to the state. This debt stemmed from an unspecified tax line filed in 2001. Additionally, the Detroit News in the same year disclosed that Sinbad had a significant outstanding debt with the Internal Revenue Service, amounting to $8.15 million, as reported by the Urban Daily. Dealing with such substantial financial obligations, especially when involving the IRS, is not a situation easily remedied. Rainbows and, and lollipops, you no. had bankruptcy. Can't be. Can't be. Can't be, man. But even, even, even the bankruptcy, what happens is, my thing was, I never... I I never do An assistant U.S. attorney took legal action against Sinbad, targeting his home. However, as reported by Accounting Today, the property was registered in his brother's name. Despite this, all mortgage payments and property taxes were sourced from Sinbad's account, leading the IRS to pursue the funds. The IRS claimed that although Sinbad filed tax returns up to 2006, he neglected to settle his owed taxes at the conclusion of each year, resulting in a substantial debt. Bankruptcy. How do bankruptcies happen? What is it no, when people happen? say, I haven't paid my I'm bankrupt. Tax? What, what, what? You know what you do? You pay, you pay your tax. My thing is, I owe no money for cars. I owe no money for home. I never... Every career has its ups and downs, but Sinbad's career truly hit rock bottom. He went from being a comedy sensation to someone who left folks scratching their heads, wondering, what happened to Sinbad? In 2020, the comedy world was shocked when the beloved comedian David Atkins, known as Sinbad, faced a serious health crisis. It was an unexpected and difficult journey that would stretch over several years. The medical bills for Sinbad's condition took a toll on his family's finances. They turned to Sinbad's fans, asking for their support and donations to ensure Sinbad's continued healing without any obstacles. The family explained, Paying for his recovery has, unfortunately, taken its toll on the family financially. Fans and well-wishers were deeply moved by Sinbad's struggle and came together with prayers and unwavering support. The strength of their faith and collective goodwill became a shining beacon of hope during this challenging time. Sinbad has also left a message on the donation site, thanking his fans for showing support. He wrote, Thank God for everything he's given you, even if it's not everything you asked for. Thank God for family and hug the ones you love while you're still with them. We need each other to get through this journey. I can't wait to see you all again soon. As always, stay funky, stay prayed up. After many years of making people laugh, Sinbad's passion for comedy remained unshakable. Even as the world grappled with the unexpected challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic, he couldn't resist the call of the stage. In February 2020, he performed one last time, unknowingly marking a poignant farewell. By October of the same year, the urge to perform had become irresistible, and he embarked on a comedy journey to Huntsville, Alabama, from October 2nd to the 4th. You could hear the excitement and anticipation in his voice as he reached out to his fans, promising a memorable show, but fate had other plans. On a fateful night, while enjoying a simple dinner and watching Saturday Night Live, Sinbad's life took a dramatic turn. October 25, 2020, became a significant day in his personal history as the day he suffered an ischemic stroke, a harrowing consequence of a blood clot's treacherous journey from his heart to his brain. 
In an ischemic stroke, the brain's vital supply of oxygen and nutrients is abruptly interrupted, setting off a perilous chain reaction where brain cells teeter on the brink of survival. Swift action was crucial. Sinbad was rushed to the emergency room, where medical experts initiated a life-saving procedure called a thrombectomy at West Hills Medical Center. This intricate surgery, reserved for a precious window of opportunity after a stroke, involved the meticulous removal of a blood clot lodged within an artery or vein, re-establishing the life-sustaining blood flow to his fragile brain. Miraculously, Sinbad emerged from the procedure with the ability to speak and walk, offering a glimmer of hope that his indomitable spirit would guide him toward recovery. However, the road ahead held further challenges. Tragically, a new blood clot formed, leading to a second thrombectomy. This time, the outcome was less favorable, prompting a transfer to the prestigious Cedar sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles. Here, the medical team discovered that Sinbad's brain was grappling with swelling, a perilous development that necessitated an arduous series of six surgeries. Among these was a craniotomy, an intricate procedure that entailed the removal of a section of his skull to alleviate pressure and mitigate the swelling. Sinbad's family shared, Our hearts were devastated. The road to recovery became unclear and extremely difficult for the family to navigate. Amid the surgical theater's hushed tension, an agonizing discovery was made, a brain bleed, a sinister revelation that cast a shadow over Sinbad's challenging path to recovery. The family, often the unsung heroes in such moments, had to bear the weight of this grim news. Sinbad's world descended into a surreal realm as he was transported to the neuro ICU, shrouded in the embrace of a medically induced coma and tethered to the rhythmic cadence of a ventilator. The family, bound by an unbreakable bond, chronicled their agony on his official website, their words laden with despair, telling a story of shattered hopes that unfolded over the course of weeks. There were signs of life as his eyes opened, communication slowly returned, and he started to regain some mobility. Sinbad's family said it took a little more from him than the first surgery. The cruel twist of fate still held him back, with his head heavy, and the left side of his body remained immobile. But in May 2021, a new chapter began. Driven by unwavering determination, Sinbad started intensive therapy, a crucial milestone on his path to recovery. A rehabilitation center became his sanctuary, where speech, physical, and occupational therapy worked together to help him get back on his feet. All in all, Sinbad's journey toward recovery has had its moments of hope and challenges. But through it all, his fans are glad of the progress he has made towards recovery. Anyway, that's it for this video, folks. Bye.